So there is a big difference if you spend $500 rather than $5,000 on what kind of dog you're gonna get. Today, I wanna tell you the differences, so keep watching. Now, when it comes to a $500 pit bull and a $5,000 pit bull, there's a lot of differences that a lot of people are not considering. And today, I wanna break down what that could actually mean if you go the cheap route rather than the expensive route. So let's just get started. So number one on that list is more than likely, if you get a cheaper dog, then that dog is gonna be mixed. It's not very often that you get a purebred that is not mixed and when you go the cheaper route these dogs can be full blood but at the same time you got to think about if an owner really wanted to sell those puppies for a higher price because they're full blood they would or if they have a bloodline so you got to consider that most of the time the cheaper ones are mixed and you really have to do your due diligence on what that mix can be look at the parents obviously which refers to number two is they have unknown backgrounds and they have a lost pedigree again you don't know what kind of dogs are mixed into this dog if you go into the cheaper route especially if you're getting it from a stranger so you really have to ask a lot of questions in that regard and the pedigree does get lost there's no family tree that you could like refer to or you could draw back from and do some research on so just know that this is what something you could be getting into now number three on the list is the genetics can be low quality and a cheaper dog what I mean by that is the fur is just not as shiny they could have some uh, muzzle issues it could be too short too long they could have some hip problems east west feet they could also have kink tails and most of the time one of the biggest things I see is that they're gonna buy a $500 pit bull thinking that they're gonna get a $5,000 American bully build in their dog. So overall, the build is just not as strong and not good as quality. Another con that you have to consider is that the medical history on your dog could be a mystery. You don't know if this is health tested. You don't know if they have skin allergies, heart diseases that could develop really easily because of their genetics, hip and joint issues. They could also have hip dysplasia. All these things could be a mystery if you get a cheaper dog that's kind of like an impulse buy keep that in mind a big thing to consider in my opinion is they can have temperament issues and also be harder to train if they're a little bit skittish they're a nervous dog or they're just an aggressive dog you got to keep in mind these people are not bred in it for the interest of the dog sometimes it's mistakes sometimes they're trying to do a crash grab so you got to make sure that their temperament is you know up to par you really could do this by just looking at the puppies which one is causing the ruckus through the pack that's just one way to do it but I think the temperament of a dog is very important and if you overlook this part then you can get yourself into trouble when you're trying to train your dog later on down the road now I know I listed off some of these cons but don't get it all messed up man let me be the first to tell you that sometimes it just doesn't matter if you get a lower budget dog okay some lower budget dogs are really great dogs keep my dog for instance I only paid $500 for my dog and he is a great dog great quality he does have skin issues that I was referring to earlier but it is definitely possible to have a lower budget dog that is a great dog throughout their life they're healthy great quality you know they're great temperament they have great coat they just know how to be friendly with everybody sometimes you could just hit it out the park now if you're gonna pay more for your dog here are some things that you could get out of it if you stretch your dollar just a little bit longer now nine times out of ten a dog that is expensive will have a proven background and a pedigree and they will have a specific bloodline that they come from and you can know all this important information like the family tree that they're coming from if they're coming from champion dogs or if they have a really rich bloodline that has proven dogs that are great quality and know how to work or whatever trait you're looking for in that dog most of the time this needs to be the case and if a breeder is charging this much it is very likely that is the case you just need to make sure you're doing your research on it first one thing you're also getting when you stretch your dollar out a little bit more for your dog is you're gonna get a dog that has a trait bred in them for a certain reason whether that's a protection dog a working dog a show dog or a well-balanced dog for the home most of the time breeders are gonna bred a trait into that dog that fits whatever lifestyle you are looking for or whatever activities you do. So if you want a working dog, you're gonna have a, a more expensive pit bull that knows how to work, knows how to exercise, do whatever you want it to do. Same with show dogs, American bullies that are a little bit more expensive. They're great looking dogs. They know how to show in the ring and they know how to train for that kind of competition. And you can also consider protective work. If you want your dog to have a great drive for protection work, how to protect the house, how to protect you, and um, how to be a guard dog, when you spend a little bit more money on this kind of stuff you're gonna get exactly what you're looking for I would say nine times out of ten as long as the breeder is not being shady an expensive dog will also have medical tests done for them so 
you could foresee in the future, what are possible problems that you could run into. Now, this covers uh, skin allergies, diseases inside the body. Having medical tests will give you a good grasp on what to expect in your dog in the later stages of their life as well, not just the early stages. Now, the more expensive dogs will usually have a higher quality build with the dog. For instance, they will have functionable muzzles. They won't have that short muzzle where they're not able to breathe. And I'm talking more towards the bully area, but a lot of things that uh, are great. They will also have no joint problems. They'll be very healthy in the range of what dog, whatever you're trying to buy. So if it's like an American Pitbull Terrier, you would get one that's an actual American Pitbull Terrier size, 30 to 60 pounds. Again, it just depends on the breeder, but these are the things that they are charging for, guys. This is the reason why they're charging high dollar because a lot of this stuff is already known in their dog. So all in all, when you spend a little bit more on your dog, it's a better quality dog, nine times out of 10, but it also depends on the breeder. I'm gonna say this a thousand times because it really does, you have to do your research. There could be very expensive dogs that people are just like doing people uh, wrong over and they're just giving them a low quality dog, but charging high quality prices, 5,000 for this dog, but it's, you know, it's a crappy dog and it's not some, uh, a dog that is healthy throughout their lifestyle. They're not gonna be healthy. So I hope you found value in this video. If you need help with your new dog that you just got, maybe if it's training, puppy accessories on what to get them, I have a next video over here that you need to click on. Go and check that out now and I will see you over there.